What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a little bit of a two-parter. One, we're gonna slightly modify one of our machines. In this case, the Artillery Sidewinder X2. There's gonna be a video popping up right over here if you guys want more information about that machine. I've been really enjoying this printer. Because it is a larger 300 by 300 by 400 machine, if you wanna print large on that machine and it's stock 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it is going to take a while. So one thing I like to do on these larger machines is put on a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and that lets you print a little bit faster and saves you some time uh, still while having some decent quality in fact some might say better quality anyway that's beside the point for that portion of the video we have a new nozzle in this is a hardened steel 0.6 millimeter nozzle that we are going to be installing in our machine. I have the old one out. All we have to do for, to get this out, by the way, is to just heat up your nozzle, uh, then use the tools that came with the machine to remove your old one, then keep it hot and install your new one. Be careful, things are hot down there, it's going to be hot. Install it, make sure you tighten it hot. One thing I wanted to note about uh, this nozzle in particular, which I will link down below, it's a, it's a $12 nozzle, hardened steel. It should uh, have some benefits that we'll go over. But as you can see here, it is a little bit longer in the tip than the stock one. And the reason why I'm noting that is because if you just replace this nozzle and you go ahead and hit print, this nozzle will dig into your print bed. So just make sure you re-level your bed and that you reset and recalibrate your Z offset when you're changing your nozzle, especially if you notice that it's longer like this. Uh, so just something to note. Another thing that you have to do is change the nozzle uh, settings in your slicer. In this case, I'm using Cura. Here's how you do it in Cura. It's actually extremely easy. You just go up to the top here and you select your nozzle. And all I'm gonna do is just change the layer height to 0.3 millimeters instead of 0.2 millimeters, just because we have a larger nozzle and that's going to help us print a little bit faster. So very easy to swap a nozzle on the machine and there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do that if you need a closer uh, video on that. Um, and also very easy to do it in your slicer. So what's next? Well, the whole reason why this came up is because 3D Max has a brand new filament and uh, we have two rolls of it here. It's PLA Plus and this one is orange glow in the dark and this one is green glow in the dark. So what makes glow in the dark uh, special other than obviously glows in the dark is the filament is abrasive, not just this filament. To make things glow in the dark, you need to have an additive inside the plastic uh, that captures light and then releases it. And uh, in this case, it's abrasive. And I've actually did some tests way before YouTube uh, with glow in the dark and I had my nozzles completely chewed out. So if you want to print something large, like what we're doing today, um, you might want to consider getting a hardened nozzle. That's why this knocks out two birds with one stone by having not only a hardened steel nozzle, but also a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Perfect for our artillery Sidewinder X2. So what are we going to print? Well, I started looking around and I came across this model on things.com called Pumpkin Skull by Random Izzy. And I just, I just fell in love with it. I think this is going to be perfect. So definitely show some love to Pumpkin Izzy in the comments and go ahead and check out some of their other work uh, on things.com and other platforms. But what I did was I brought this file into Cura and I upsized it quite a bit. I actually maximized the uh, whole print area on the Sidewinder uh, X2 and I had to go 300 30% in scale on this machine. So with this uh, particular file, you're going to need support. So it's a long print. With the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I was getting a little bit over three days. Not that bad, I've done that before, but hey, I wanna print a little bit faster. So with this 0.6 millimeter nozzle, lightning infill and 80 millimeter speed, we're able to print this in just over a day. So significantly faster with just a simple upgrade. So um, let's go ahead and bring the camera over to the Sidewinder. I'm gonna speed through a nozzle install and a leveling, and then we are going to print. And I'll see you right here when that thing is done in a few days. All right. Oh, by the way, while I'm setting up the shot, this little file right over here that moves the sensor away from the rollers definitely fixed the problem that I had with the Sidewinder, uh, with the filament grinding and having kind of like a weird uh, filament pathway. Now it is nice and smooth from the spool directly to the extruder. So file down in the description below. All right. 
right, so contrary to popular belief, I do make mistakes, and I made one today with one of these longer nozzles. Essentially, on the Sidewinder X2, that little bit of extra length is not enough for the leveling sensor to actually uh, make full contact with the bed before the nozzle. So, what I did was I went into Tinkercad and I made this little adapter. And all, all it does is it moves the sensor over a little bit. There we go, now you can see it. It moves the sensor over a little bit. I printed it in PETG. This was just a 12 minute print. So quick and easy. And now we have a solution for longer nozzles. I'll definitely include links to both types of nozzles from Amazon down below. So if you already had these available or those come a little faster, like in my case, than the other nozzles, uh, you don't have to be afraid of watering it because you can just use this little adapter, move your sensor over and down just a little bit to compensate and you should be good to go so i'm going to go ahead and throw that on and do the uh, and do the leveling again and hopefully we'll get printing in no time all right let's get going Well, this is painful to watch. We are over a day and a half in to printing and we had some failure on the supports there, but that's okay, that wasn't a big deal. Uh, it was also popping up off the sides here, but I had some tape uh, going down and it was printing absolutely beautifully as you can see the size of this thing. But then it looks like the lightning supports just didn't work. And uh, well, there you just saw the problem right there. That's the back of the eye sockets and they're not supported nearly enough. So I'm going to let it go anyway, because this is already pretty much an entire roll. So I'll just let it work. And in case the outside finishes, maybe I'll be able to fill in the eye sockets with something. So it's not a total loss. But yeah, here's the size comparison. That's my hand. So this thing is absolutely massive. And if you can see the sides here, the print quality is actually really, really great. It's just, uh, this was just a setup issue. The supports are, well, not good enough. And I tried to slow it down. As you can see, the print is moving pretty slow. Uh, I had it at 80 millimeters per second. And it looks like I set it up wrong. Well, you win some, you lose some. Let's see what happens at the end of this. And if anything, I'll start it again. Wow, I can't believe I'm going to, uh, to actually do this but <laughs> I am going to go to sleep uh, because it is really late and um, well this is how much filament we have left just a couple maybe three two times around that spool oof that's uh, that's gonna be close so the eyes they have some issues but they did print as you can see, I just don't have enough lightning infill. It is mostly hollow. So the nose right there is pretty much printing in the air. And uh, it is clipping like that. But I'm just going to let it go. I've done it the whole time now. And uh, the shell of it looks really, really good. So let's hope when I wake up, the print will be done. And we won't be missing any parts. Well, it's morning the next day. So let's turn the camera around and see how it did. All right, looks like according to the timer here, it says 46 hours. That's with me slowing it down. And here's what we got. Here's my hand for reference. <laughs> this thing is massive. And here is how much filament we have left. Cutting it super, super close. This is a full spool print. All right, I'm gonna get this off the build plate. We're gonna print one more piece in the green glow and I'll see you at the desk in a second. Check it out. It actually finished. Now the eyes aren't perfect, but the rest is pretty close to perfect. Absolutely awesome model, awesome printer. The nozzle worked out. We learned a ton. 
And hopefully this video was helpful to some of you, not only to introduce you to a new filament, to nozzle changing and why you would change a nozzle to a hardened nozzle, but also how quickly you yourself can make small changes. I made the little adapter in Tinkercad in a few minutes, printed in about 12 minutes and some PETG, and we were off to the races, uh, you know, without, um, having to reorder any parts or anything like that. Just, you know, doing your own DIYs with 3D printing is always so rewarding. So not only was this rewarding, but having that nozzle and that machine and having it uh, working flawlessly was also a bit of the reward. So the top here was printed in green uh, glow in the dark, and I'll show you some, uh, some footage here of what it looks like glowing. So as you can see, the green glows just a little bit more than the orange, but the orange came out so good here. Let's, uh, let's take a look a little bit closer. So essentially what happened in this print uh, was I wanted it to be somewhat hollow, mostly to save time, and uh, I wanted to print this as close to a full spool as possible, and that was the only way I was gonna get it to be this big uh, in that way. So I... Um, first tried to print it this way with supports from the bottom but that needed way too many supports and it just there wasn't enough touching on the build plate for it to work properly so then i oriented it this way and had it printed with all the features upward thinking that there won't be needing any much supports except for everything that's on the bottom as you guys saw in the videos uh, of uh, me uh, having uh, panic attacks but then i thought the inside would be taken care of with uh, about a 40 percent lightning infill i think is what i went for but the problem was the eyes had to get printed on some really thin supports and that's what all the problems were so yeah they're not perfect on the inside here and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a soldering iron uh, and I'm gonna go in there and kind of even things out just a little bit I might have to add a little bit of plastic just so that there isn't any gaps and then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some patina to this a little bit uh, there's different ways to do it but I think it would look really cool with all these cracks and crevices to be a little bit darker than the outside so yeah it won't glow as bright that way but I think it'll just be uh, a cooler piece so yeah hardened nozzle for uh, things like glow-in-the-dark filament wood filament uh, carbon filled um, uh, glass filled that type of thing is definitely needed and now I know that that printer won't have any problems with it so very excited uh, excited about this glow-in-the-dark film but the stuff was awesome here is all we have left just a couple uh, more windings around the spool uh, for this so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, as always i'm gonna have links down below to everything that you saw in the video you guys using my links helps me a ton uh, they are affiliate links so what that means is you guys get to shop the things that i recommend and i get a small kickback if you guys buy anything and it helps the channel continue to grow uh, another thing I want to mention is the Patreon. Thank you to all my Patreon members. You guys helped me directly see all these videos early, as well as the Discord uh, channel, which is free to everyone to use. There's lots of contests on there, giveaways. Uh, we, you, there's a classified section where you can uh, buy and sell things. Uh, lots of people showing off their prints, with things like this, for example. And there's lots of really talented people doing some awesome finishing work, which I might have to ask a few of you guys uh, some of your advice on what to do uh, with this. Um, but yeah. I'm really excited uh, to just continue working on this. Like I said, it's spooky season. I think this thing will look really cool uh, as a decoration. All right. I think that's all for me today. And as always, I'll see you all in the comments. Later.